Welcome to day 18 and 19 here at TorahFamilyLiving.com. We're going to do two days today so that we have the continuity of, of the scriptures together. So read with me, starting in verse 15. We're going to go ahead and back up to verse 15. And all that the Father has is mine. That is why I said that he takes from what is mine and announces it to you. A little while and you do not see me, and a little while and you shall see me. Therefore some of his taught ones said to one another, What is that that he is saying to us? A little while and you do not see me, and again a little while and you do see me? And because I'm going to the Father? And they said, What is this that he says? A little while. We do not understand what he is saying. Yeshua therefore knew that they were wishing to ask him, and he said to them, Are you asking one another about what I said a little while, and you do not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me? Truly, truly, I say to you that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be grieved, but your grief shall become joy. The woman has grief when she is in labor, because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the affliction for joy that a man was born into the world. And you, therefore, have grief now, but I shall see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and no one takes your joy away from you. And in that day you shall ask me none at all. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he shall give you. Until now... You have asked not in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, in order that your joy might be complete. We see the disciples are distraught. They're kind of baffled by this, this statement that Yeshua made. He's going to be away. There's going to be a time of grieving. You won't see him. He's going to his Father. What does that mean? We know he was sent from the Father, but he's going back to the Father. We don't really understand what all of that means. And it isn't until after his death, burial, and resurrection that they really begin to conceptually grasp what was being said here. We being 2,000 years removed from the event here, we have a much clearer vision. All that was given to the Son was from the Father, so there is this achad, this unity and purpose, which was before the foundation of the world, the concept of what God was doing to restore those that were obedient to him. This really is key to understand, this word obedient, because in obedience, it brings us to the place where we can have complete joy. You say, where did you get that? Well, we also need to remember that we we got to take this, this particular passage of Scripture and also contextually keep it in the continuity of the whole Word of God and the principles of God's truth. They all have to interweave together to create a tapestry that tells the whole picture. And it really does come to light when you come down to verses 23 and 24 of all of these questions and answering and things and understanding. How do they get to this point where they can have such a strong foundation in which they they can stand and say, I will not bend a knee to any other except Yahweh alone. You find that down here in verses 23 and 24. And here is the underlying assignment, if you will, that that outlays everything as far as having a complete joy in Messiah and through the Father. Let me read it and then walk you through the process. And in that day you shall ask me none at all. In other words, you're not going to go and ask Yeshua for something. It says, truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father. So we go to the Father and we ask how we ask in Yeshua's name. In other words, we take that literally to mean that at the end of our prayer, we pray, we ask for these different things, and we say we ask these in the name of Yeshua. That's not contextually what it's really saying here. What it's saying here is when we go to the Father and we ask for something, we need to make sure that what we're asking line up with the name, it lines up with the person, it lines up with the character, it lines up with the message, it lines up with the method of what Yahweh has told his son to live. And if we are following what Yeshua has laid out for us and how to 
walk out our life in him, that's what we do is we go to the Father and ask him to reveal to us, going back to verse 15, that all that the Father has given to the Son is now the Son's. We go back further and we see that speaking of the Holy Spirit being poured out, the Holy Spirit is only going to bring to remembrance the things the Son and the Father has given. That is the plan and the purpose. So keeping this all in context, when we come and we ask the Father the things that are true that the Son has provided for us, a revelation of how we are supposed to ask and what we are supposed to ask for so that we can walk in right relationship with God, then, and it is then, and ask in His name, ask and you shall receive in order that your joy might be full and complete and a wholeness to it. But if you, if you don't keep the order in order that, if you don't keep the order, if you don't come and ask in the name of the Son, in other words, in the, in the things that He desires for you to do, which is coming and asking according to His Word and asking Him to reveal that to you so that you can walk in that, you won't have joy because you will doing some of the things that God wants you to do, but doing then what you want to do. And the two can't go hand in hand. In fact, those times in which we act in our own accord, we are told in the Brit Hadashah, teaches us that all of our acts, all the things that we do, all the things we ask for, all the things we receive, all the actions that we act are going to be tried by fire and the wood, hay, and stubble, the things that are of ourself, the things that have no value or eternal value for the Father and the Son are going to be burnt up and only the treasured gold, silver, is going to remain. Those are the things that come from the truth of Yah's word. The, the, the value that's unspeakable will last even through the time of testing. And that's where we get our joy, is following the order of how we're supposed to walk in faith, walk according to the ways of the Son, which is keeping the entire instructions of Yah's Word. Well, I hope this has been instructional to you and an encouragement to you. And I pray that you have a very blessed day. Thank you.